Yeah, I heard you last week, Go obviously on. on the podcast. I don't listen occasionally. I always listen. And I heard you say that you have no influence on people. Actually, you have influence over the people who listen to your podcast. I don't think that they do go and see a film if you hate it. I just think that that's some do the, the exact opposite. Of the some do the exact opposite. And if Mark, do they just know that they have different tastes? And yeah. if Mark slags something off, they'll go and see it. And sure. if you really, really love something, they they. Well, they, you know, they, on they, the, I listen because he infuriates me invariably. And so I am screaming at him. He's so wrong about so many things. What is but it that that very is, Because normally it's down to me to tell him what he's wrong about. So what well, is he wrong about? This is like two against one. If we're going to get into the school, for those who don't know, you know, Jason and I went to school together. We weren't, and this is this is a point of debate. Well, either. now you see, we, did, we didn't know each other. Well, we knew of each other. We were in the same class together, right? And in, in my version of events. Jason was just far too cool for me. Well, see, was I the... come out very badly from this. Because you don't I... come out of it badly. Mark was the in crowd. He was the epicenter. He always dressed rather coolly like that. He always did his hair in a way that uh, was way beyond our years. And I, I, I would look at him from <laughs> far, surrounded hair. by this little entourage and think, if only I was in that gang. And occasionally I was in that gang. But uh, he remembers that I, I don't know what I remember it completely the other way around. I think you want to paint yourself as an outsider. No, no, I mean, I, I, honestly, look, I would love to have been anything but I would love to have had friends and influence people. I would love to have been the guy who Do had... you still speak to anyone from school? Well, you, um, but I haven't <laughs> seen you, seen obviously, in, in 20 years. Okay. Uh, uh, only in a podcast sense. So he says a lot of them, but doesn't expect yeah. it. Well, I'm saying the moment no, before, no. it's a bit like meeting a porn star, those people who go to conventions. I feel intimately acquainted with both of you, but I haven't spent any time with you. And I'm rather nervous. How do you feel about that, Simon, being equated to a porn, porn star? Convention. What happens at a porn convention? I, I think people go and get things signed by people who they are biblically acquainted with, but only by themselves. Right. And bear in mind, Mark... I'm we're, guessing. We're absolutely. <laughs> yes. Just essential research. Yeah. <laughs> we are talking to someone who has been voted uh, one of the 13 sexiest men who are real and alive. One of the 13? Yes. Was I number well, 13? Lucius, <laughs> was <that why> <laughs> well, Lucius <laughs> Malfoy, number. the character, of course, from uh, Harry Potter, was one of the 12 sexiest men who were never alive. Ah, that's nice. So you're sexy alive and sexy never but alive. But sexier... But as just Lucy one of the other Malfoy. things, because I have to get back to it, one no, of the no. things that you are sometimes fantastically entertainingly wrong about... Here we go. ..is that, in a really cheesy way, I know quite a lot of people that you talk about sometimes. I've met yeah. them. They're not, not in my speed dial list, but I know them. I've worked <laughs> with them. And when you guess what it is that has contributed to a film being yes. terrible or yeah, good, yeah. you very often attribute it to the wrong person. In fact, you very often attribute things to actors, and we don't deserve it. Because give me... OK, OK, OK. OK, OK. Give I'll me give an example. Give, give, me, give me a hard okay. and fast I'll give example. you the opposite example of what I just said, because okay. that's how you see, that fickle means, that I means am. I can't give You're you an example. You're so wrong about Pirates of the Caribbean and Johnny Depp in it, particular in this aspect. Go on, Johnny go Depp gets a part, and is offered a part, as he often is in giant blockbuster films, all of which he turns down. He decides to take this cheesy film about a Disney ride. It's going to be unbelievably normal and dull. And he perversely turns up with a bunch of gold teeth and plays it like, yeah. you know, plays it like a gay Londoner who's staggering out of heaven at four o'clock in the morning in 1975. And the studio go ballistic. They beg him not to do it. And he says, fire me or put up with it. And he's the guy that elevates this film from being a you know a film for the family to right. this huge juggernaut, and that's why he, don't, he doesn't deserve okay, props uh, to Sweeney Todd. He deserves his props and his Oscar no, nomination okay, for right. that film. Excuse me. Okay, and firing back. This is great because awesome. I'm feeling go. I'm having my work done for me <coughs> by the Golden no, Globe no. nominated. No, excuse me. Here's, ha yeah. here's how this the happens. Non Golden Globe attending. The person, <laughs> the person that I cite in that is uh, is Gore Verbinski. Now, two things. Firstly, the studio were right. Johnny Depp's performance in that film is terrible. It is the performance of an undirected man. It's it, the reason not, why... It doesn't it matter. Made, it, it, but, hey, listen, that, that may be true. smell vision may be the reason why some of those films... It doesn't mean it's any No, they good. don't. I tell you, I, I did the Robert McKee course a few years ago in London. What, I, about smell vision I know, about, you know, formulaic structure, so we thought. A bunch of British people went to do it, and we went really to make fun of him and tell him, who the hell are you to come here and tell us how to write uh, films? And he came out and immediately disarmed everyone by saying, I know nothing about making films. You're all thinking, if this guy knows so much, how come he hasn't written giant blockbusters and you can write whatever films you want. But if you make a film nowadays, despite the marketing and the hype and the McDonald's Happy Meals that ends up making five, six hundred million dollars around the world, it's because it has somehow resonated with the audiences because you can't hype things that big. You can't make teenagers want to see a film 20 times. Yes, Something in it hits a good... You can't. I, 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 there aren't films that are that successful without somehow hitting a chord. It might be a chord we don't like. It might be something misogynistic. It might be something violent about mob rule. You know, something, some kind of revenge fancy, but nonetheless something about what he did in Pirates of the Caribbean 
elevated it from what their projections were to something ten times bigger and turned it into yeah. a global so, franchise. And it's his performance alone. That something, did. something about what he did. This did, is great. Did, did something about what he did did resonate. It resonated with the increasingly stupid gene which is taking over the world. What Johnny Depp did was, and I'm, I stand completely uncorrected on this. He dreamt up that performance. He came on set. Gore Verbinski went, "What? I don't, Johnny Depp? Fine." The studio then may have said, "You're not doing that." Gore Verbinski, take your ne- teeth out. Gore Verbinski would up. never no. once have said to Johnny Depp, "Johnny, you know, stop doing that," because Gore Verbinski couldn't direct traffic. He is an accountant. He's a bean counter. I mean, I mean if you look at the rest of Gore Verbinski's oof, it is the work of somebody who is putting tab A into slot B. And my problem with Johnny Depp in that oh, film, bean which, counter. What? Chris Columbus. Yeah. I worked with him. He did the second Harry Potter. And, and of course, we, we've discovered that there is a flaw in my Chris Columbus is that he wrote, he wrote Gremlins. Gremlins. That's right. Yeah. And he's also... So he to, oh, I listen, I know everyone. He also, I think, is... A, well, apart from the fact he's a lovely fellow. You're going to say anything about as an artist. No, he is a he is, delightful fine, fellow. But when he's there, you're gonna sign he's only completely the creative on the set. And when I turned up on Harry Potter, I thought, well, this is the guy who directed all those films. It's going to be... I'll be slotting into an American box, but I'm happy to be here. In fact, he went, what do you want to do? What do you think the scene's about? And he gave me complete creative freedom, as he did to all the other people. And the reason why the franchise hasn't collapsed under its own weight and expectations is that each time it's got better and better and bigger audiences. After number one, there'd be a terrifying thing uh, to make number two. Number two is even more successful. They continue to be more successful every time because he actually got lovely performances out of people and tells the story well with a camera. Now, he might choose to tell cheesy stories when he's not doing Harry Potter, but he did Harry Potter incredibly well, I thought. Uh, I think that what he did with Harry Potter was he did a, 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 a terrific holding job and the minute that Alfonso Cuaron got hold of it, suddenly you went, different oh, book. hang on. No, it's not different book. Different, darker, I'm, thinner book, different so, story. Darker, thinner book, perhaps, but just generally properly work of and somebody un- understands cinema. As far as the bean counter thing is concerned, look, you can be a creative accountant. You're still an accountant. Chris Columbus yeah, You've got to come and Chris do some set business and see what's no, like no, no, on the no, set no, 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 with that, actors no. and with story. No, because you know you, aliens you know, versus you know, predator. You know what happens? Yeah. Aliens yeah. versus predator. This is Mark versus Jason. This is even better, and you can set, watch it online. Set it's visits. All there. Set visits are the worst thing that any film critic could do because what happens? Because no, you'll know where to attribute blame. No, or success. It's, it's like it's like trusting the tale rather than the teller. You know, there is a certain uh, degree of detachment that has to exist in these things for them to have any resonance at all. I spend my entire life talking to people who see films that are rubbish and they're going, well, yeah, but the thing is and you know what what it is, is they spent three weeks on set. Yeah, and, and you know, like someone I, mean, I see that. And it's fine, and you know, I was on set of Split Second and I thought the sets looked great and the flooded London looked great and it had Rutger Hauer and it had that woman who ended up being the woman out of that programme that's incredibly successful, you know, what's her name, Thingy Bob, not Desperate. Give us a clue, more than that, okay. surely. Sex, sex, bit, sex and the, Kim Cattrall, Kim Cattrall, okay. Kim Cattrall. At that point she hadn't been in Sex and the City, right? Which I haven't seen because of television. And, uh, but she had been in a thing called... Uh, uh, Something else. No, no, Bridge to Paradise. Bridge, Bridge to Paradise. To, okay. Yeah, which, is, which, was, which was about people being taken by the Moonies, and she was very good in it. And I was on set, and I thought, how can this not be good? It's got Rook Howard, it's got these sets, it's got this stuff and the thing, and I like the producer, and I like the director, and why, the film comes out, it's rubbish. Yeah, because it's almost always the script, and very often you attribute to actors, and some of the people I've worked who with... I attribute to actors, are, one attributes to actors. One. No, you and I generally don't. the industry attributes to actors things that they just don't deserve. I, a lot of the people who get a lot of praise, including mm. myself often, really don't deserve some of the people who will be nameless because I'll never work again are monumentally untalented that you credit with having made decisions about their Mine characters one. or I know you can't, it's on the I can't yeah. name anybody because I'll never work again but nonetheless a lot of people I know who are just not only awful people face to face but are just terrifyingly wrong in every creative decision they make they are steered around and edited around and they end up getting credit from you and if you come to the set you'd have seen what uh, those so there are they people are. there are people that I have that I have praised who in your in your opinion don't deserve the praise in anyone who's met them you see no but it's, it's it, okay but this is yeah. interesting it's lovely to hear it from this because usually the thing I get is there are people that you, the people that you've slagged off that don't deserve the slagging although frankly they made the thing what? Ultimately I had to put my hand up in my own show just to get in here ultimately it's down to the actor to choose the script though isn't it? If you, cho- if you choose a bad script it's your fault Oh, well, you well, work? I've got two kids and a mortgage, you know. And, I mean, I, I know a lot of people. Right, well, that, that, I mean, Dave got a lot of stick for doing Basic Instinct too. It did what he not from us, do, you know? not, not from, from us. you. True, and he was fabulous in it. He was. And boy, did he work out? Yeah, yeah he did. <laughs> <laughs> that scene and all he, the evidence was. It there. was all on screen. Yeah. That film's very, very. And sometimes you take something and the script changes, or you know, there are rewrites come and they're not in your control, or you know, whatever. Yep. But performances, regardless of words, are down to it. And I have quite often seen movies in which I've seen actors doing their very best with a very poor Of all the yeah. things that he's been wrong about... What's the wrongest? What's the wrongest 
He mispronounces so many names. I but can't again, say. examples, examples. Milo, Milo Jovovich. When did I ever say Mortensen. Milo? I don't know. I mean, how Viggo long have you got? When did I right? ever say Milo Jovovich? <laughs> oh, no, I've got. I showed you. I've got fine. all your fine. podcasts here. Milo Jovovich. Hang on. 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 Scarlett Johansson, because as my friend Nigel Floyd says, just because she can't pronounce her own Fair name enough. doesn't mean that that's the correct pronunciation. Fair but enough. hey, it's her name. That's how it's going to work out. 